big dog today. Firefox torch. The easiest way ever to light a fire. Alrighty, welcome back to Fire to Fork. Now, I am in the middle of country Victoria somewhere, about halfway between Melbourne and Adelaide, and I'm gonna make myself some lunch. So, I thought, budget car, I'm gonna do a budget meal. So, this one, I don't know what to call it, I'll try and give it a name at some stage throughout this episode. Also, remember in this episode, remember to comment the code word down below on YouTube. Uh, somewhere in this episode, there will be the code word and you can win a copy of my book. So, let's get started. First things first is to cut up some cherry tomatoes, which I've got in here. You can just use normal tomatoes if you want, but I like cherry tomatoes. So, get a little bowl, and we'll chop these guys up. Now, something else I wanna quickly show you is this thing. Osbry, you would be familiar with these knives. All the gear is all the gear that I use is on my gear page on my website. Um, they have finally brought out a good quality sharpener. I have a cupboard full of test sharpeners at home that they sent me over the years to try out. None of them were very good. This thing is genuinely amazing. It does such a good job. You said it's 20 degrees for an Osbry knife. Put it through a couple of times, it's razor sharp now. I mean, you could, like, you know, the way you can cut a, see if I can do it this down here. I mean, this is a big clumsy knife, really. And it's just like, just no issue at all. So these things are 35 bucks and they do a job that, honestly, my couple of hundred dollars worth of whetstones, you know, they, they do the same job, but this does it in, 30 seconds and whetstone does it in 30 minutes um, and yeah it's you can just chuck it in your box and take it's they're so good if you have one of these knives or if your you know, partner or whatever has some of these knives great present just get yourself one get it for all your knives at home they're I'm not telling you this because you know I, I'm, I don't own Osbra I don't run Osbra I don't you know nothing like that but just telling you because they are so bloody useful and it's one of the most asked questions I have is how do I sharpen these things? That's how you sharpen them. Now, a few cherry toms in there. And I'm gonna start by adding some salt. You should, if you possibly can, every time you chop up tomatoes, um, you should ideally put some salt on them and pepper if you like it. Uh, a good sort of 10, 15 minutes before, ideally half an hour before. And then just coat that over and it draws out a lot of the juice and a lot of the extra flavor in there. It's really, really, really worthwhile. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of red wine vinegar. You can use balsamic or something if you want. The kind of vibe we're going for here is kind of like a bruschetta. Um, oh, speaking of which, uh, I'm, I like a little bit of red onion in there. So I'll probably go like, not tons. My wife calls red onion salad herpes. So you can tell probably what her opinion of it is. Uh, I like it. I like that bit of zing. God, the flies are bloody bad here. Come on, Victoria. I feel like, I feel like I'm in the Pilbara. Didn't expect this in Southern Victoria. All right, give that a mix around, maybe a little bit more red wine vinegar in there. So probably want sort of two teaspoons total in there. And that will sort of take the, a bit of the edge off that, um, off the onion as well, <laughs> uh, which is good. So it's not too intense. And then just a tiny bit of olive oil. So probably a, Another two tables, two teaspoons, sorry. Oh, it smells amazing. <laughs> it really does not smell so good. Next, Turkish roll. By the way, if you're ever buying uh, bread from a supermarket, I 
strongly suggest you don't go down that bread aisle. You know the one, it's got all the loaves of bread on the rack. Go to the bakery section. They're fresh baked, they are that much better quality and they actually hire pretty legit bakers um, in those places. So I'm gonna pull some of the bread out of this. Oh, actually, I just realized I've got a little bit of parsley in there. I might, might throw just a touch of parsley in with this um, tomato and onion. I think that'll go quite well. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Okay, what I've got here is some mozzarella. Just normal, cheap, grated mozzarella. This is like a $2 bag. Not bocconcini or anything fancy. Bit of mozzarella in the middle. And this is where things get a little bit weird. By the way, these Kelmat bags, what I've started to use as a rubbish bag, because they've got, they're a wood bag, but they've got a square bottom, so they actually stand. Really good for people who don't have a wheel on the back of their car. Uh, I like a um, pork sausage. So that's what I've gone for. These are a very average quality pork Cumberland. Uh, I didn't know where the butcher was and I was in a rush, so I got these from Coles or Woolies or... Oh, they're British Sausage Company. Yeah, they're okay. Take the skin off. And then you just squish this thinly over the whole lot. Really thin, ideally. I should have put some oil on my hands before I made this a little bit easier. But they're covered in pork now, so it's doing the same job. Oh, that's better. Now, remember, sausages have heaps of salt in them, so you don't need to salt this. Uh, but I'll probably chuck a little bit of pepper on there. Oh no, there's pepper in this. This'll, that'll be fine. All right. And I've got a really, really low fire going. So we'll go and move down to that. I might put this in the shade. So you can see this fire is just embers, really. There's bugger all heat there. Which is perfect for this. You can do this on a pan, but I'm just gonna do it straight on the fire for this room because you want these to cook relatively slowly because you're only going to cook one side of the snag so you want it to cook all the way through and then you also want it to cook the um, cheese underneath leave them for a few minutes bloody birds <laughs> all right <clears throat> these have been on for about Probably just under 10 minutes. Nice low heat. I did chuck one more. Um, oh yeah, look at that. Oh, lost a little bit there. So, oh, yeah, that's still good. We can, we can recover that. Yeah. Now this will be cooked through because it's only very thin. Cook that for a tiny, tiny bit more. That's all brown. <laughs> look at that. Bloody perfect. Actually, now I need to just quickly do the other side, just for a few seconds. That side will not take long at all. That's been on there like a minute. Yeah, that's fine. Just a tiny bit of warmth and crisp on the back. And I'll just let that one finish off for a couple of minutes, but in the interim, let's serve this thing up. Okay, so. Oh, bugger off. This stuff on. Now, <clears throat> look. If you're a, if you've got kids or something, don't put anything on it. Just give them sausage and cheese. They'll love it. Perfect. Bit of barbecue sauce or something if you really need to. Tomato sauce. This will go well with all that stuff, and you can have a really simple meal. Um, but I like to make it a little bit, a little bit flash. Gratuitous B-roll. And let's serve this thing up. Okay. 
Alrighty. That is so tasty. Mmm. Mmm. Bit of chili in there or something would be just. All right, <clears throat> that is an absolute ripper. I'm stoked with that. What did I say I'm going to call it? The snag sketter, sausage sketter. Oh. Oh. One of the best things I've ever had with a beer. Also, it's quite warm. Wow. It's excellent. <clears throat> oh. Okay, that's it for this episode. See you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. <clears throat> oh, this is so good.